Jim. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead. Browsing my favourite section of Waterstones, I'm drawn to a rather red cover. The title on the cover made me pick it up, and the tagline made me take it to the till without so much as looking at the blurb. Now that is the power of the physical bookshop. Ensign Dahl has been assigned to the flagship of the Universal Union, the Intrepid. Only, things are not as they seem. If you're not part of the command crew, the universe thinks you're expendable, and the crew spends a lot of its time trying to avoid away missions because, quite frankly, they don't want to die. Third person past tense throughout, with the exception of the final epilogues, which mix styles and tenses in a clever and entertaining way. The prose itself flows nicely, but it is very dialogue heavy, and as a result, for me at least, it feels shorter than it is. I quite enjoy good chunks of dialogue, and often tend towards that myself when I take a stab at writing, but here, uh, I don't know, it just felt like dialogue was being used to set the scene instead of a paragraph or two of decent descriptive prose. With a title like Red Shirts, and a tagline like They Were Expendable Until They Started Comparing Notes, there is one question that, above all others, needs to be answered. Is it as funny as it sounds? Every fibre of my being wants to cry, Yes! I nearly pissed myself! I was laughing so hard! But I can't, because I didn't. Now, that's not to say that this isn't funny or interesting, because it is funny, and the fact that I ploughed through it in a few days does rather suggest that I found it interesting. I think that my problem is that I don't think it was as funny as it could have been. Uh, unless a lot of the humour is just very American and went completely over my head, in which case, fair enough, I guess. Um, it's just that based on the tagline and the blurb when I eventually read it, I was expecting it to be more like well, Series 3 to 6 of Red Dwarf, and a little less like the Back to Earth Red Dwarf special. Uh, this is actually a little frustrating. I mean, my policy against spoilers is ramming right up against my biggest issue with this novel. Um, okay, so there is a reason why Red Shirts die on away missions when the Command Crew are present. The Red Shirts work it out, and I would have preferred the reason to be a little less metaphysical and a bit more wibbly-wobbly, ooh, space, if that made any sense at all. The red-shirted characters themselves are actually pretty fun. Uh, one thing I love about them is the fact that they swear, get drunk, take drugs, and are very cynical, and generally not the best of the best. Dahl and Duval in particular have a good chemistry, with Dahl serving perfectly well as a main protagonist. The not Captain Kirk and not Mr. Spock are wonderfully identifiable as the parodies that they are, and the rest of the command crew, well, Lieutenant Kerensky, well, I just love the fact that he is not only just as screwed up as the Red Shirts, but he is just as screwed. One thing Red Shirts does very well is in building up the mystery of what's actually happening on the Intrepid, mixing it in with some wonderful parodying of Star Trek. I mean, the reactions of the crew when not Captain Kirk or not Mr. Spock come along are often brilliant. But the reveal, the solving of the mystery, it really left me cold. I mean, for me, I find Red Shirts is at its best when it's ripping the piss out of everyone's favourite 60s TV show. I mean, there's plenty to play for you, Mark, about the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, and the first half of the book does a grand job of it. It's when it turns into something meaningful about the nature of television writing that it kind of lost me. Uh, this is not because the meaningful parts were poorly written, uh, far from it. Uh, these parts contain some wonderful writing and some very beautiful, very poignant, very human moments. The epilogues themselves are also very cleverly written, but it's just not quite what I expected from a novel with that title and that tagline. I know it sounds like I'm being very picky, and I am. But I suppose it's also making it sound like I didn't really enjoy this novel, which is wrong, because I very much did. Would I recommend this? Yes, absolutely I would. Um, despite not being a fan of the reveal, this is still a fine book. Uh, the strongest moments, as I said, are definitely when it mixes the mystery and the parody. It does feel a little brief, even at 310 pages, and it is by no means as funny as you think it's going to be but it is still an excellent and very worthwhile read.